Thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity to join you today. Uh, my presentation is about the uh, nexus of climate change and the ongoing Syrian civil war. Uh, let me start the presentation mode right now. I think you can see it. Here, uh, I will say a few words about the abstract first, the general idea of the presentation. Uh, here, as you can see, the title is about uh, the nexus between the climate change and the ongoing uh, Syrian civil war. Uh, we are all familiar with the, what is going on in Syria. Uh, since two, uh, 2011, a civil war uh, in Syria has been costing uh, thousands of lives and billions of economic loss. As you can see, here uh, my focus is on the uh, causes and course of the war, uh, which are multidimensional. This can be briefly presented. Uh, roughly speaking, as a mix of ethno-religious tensions and manipulative foreign intervention by several parties. Uh, however, uh, or furthermore, in addition to these factors. As shown by some recent studies, uh, a lengthy period of drought uh, worsened by the climate change should be also taken into account here. By the way, this drought period uh, actually predates the war itself. However, it is definitely one of the key drivers of the war. Uh, this can be uh, all this can be uh, placed in a wider context relating to the Arab Spring or wider uh, Middle Eastern politics and or in wider uh, international systemic uh, debates. Right now, uh, here I am referring to some uh, theoretical perspectives, balance of power, balance of threat, and others. I will keep uh, those references at a minimum right now, uh, but I may uh, elaborate more on them, uh, depending on the possible questions from the other participants. This is the major focus of the presentation here. Uh, my, uh, my talk is based on preliminary, uh, preliminary assessments. It is part of, on, of uh, let's say, ongoing work. Uh, and this uh, topic can be examined from a, a pluralistic perspective. It's a, it requires actually multidisciplinary work. What I uh, will say is, uh, based on, as I see from an international relations perspective, there is a more than one way of interpreting the, uh, let's say, phenomenon. Here, there are three major questions that may lead our, uh, that uh, may, let's say, lead our investigation of the topic. The first one is the major question. Is the climate change led drought process between uh, 2007 and 2009 and or a bit earlier? This is another source of debate, by the way. The lead cause trigger of the conflict in Syria. Here, the literature says, uh, Nobody, again, as I uh, wrote here, nobody probably says definitely yes, but there are some important debates stemming from this very point. Uh, whether the climate change led drought process was the single or most important cause of the conflict. Second question is, if not lead or single cause, then how important exactly, again, uh, here, exact extent and mechanism, causal paths. This is the uh, real focus of the debate in the literature and in this presentation, by the way. The, uh, again, there seem to be important disagreements in the multidisciplinary literature. I will talk uh, just, uh, just soon. Uh, and third question, what are the sources of these agreements in the literature? There, there are a number of reasons from a broad perspective, I, I, here I present a summary, actually. First one is, uh, could be disciplinary and methodological differences. Second one will be, uh, seems like need for more research, 
third, two context-specific answers, fourth, different hierarchies of causes in multi-causal explanations, and fifth, uh, specifics of causal paths, and sixthly, worries about the risk of securitization. Here on the right, you can uh, see a brief definition of securitization, which is a, let's say, a mainstream, let's say, concept in international relations literature. It refers to the process by which states here uh, determine threats to nation security based on subjective assessments uh, and securitization occurs across five sectors military political economic societal and environmental so uh, in this perspective states uh, let's say perceived threats to national security will securitize those sectors by taking measures to enhance their security without public debate and democratic process in a simple language uh, so the securitization is an extreme form of uh, politicization a non-transparent form of politicization. And finally, a, fi a finalism will be calls for more policy relevant and applicable research. These are the, uh, let's say, uh, divergent views that may be seen in the literature. This is the uh, general uh, direction for the investigation. So uh, furthermore, the literature can be categorized under three broad groups and uh, which have their own subgroups. So in other words, there are three broad ways to reply the climate change conflict nexus question in the context of the Syrian civil war. First group uh, argues that the climate change factor, including the drought process, is simply important to explain the Syrian conflict. Uh, here, my focus uh, will be on Kelly et al. and uh, 2015, simply Kelly. This uh, research was published by climate scientists. This is important. A second group criticizes the uh, first group and argues that climate change factor is not that important. Here, the key word is Selby, briefly which is written by a scholar of international relations and a scholar of human geography. This is an, another interesting uh, point of uh, agreement. Uh, and a third group of the works states that the, we, do not, we do not have enough studies and evidence to decide on the matter and climate uh, conflict relationship is not clear. So uh, this is uh, the way I see I interpret the literature and the questions and the answers. This is an operational simplification. Uh, obviously, there are not worthy nuances inside these categories. And of course, a few works can be located uh, or categorized in different, let's say, uh, in more than one category. This is a... Uh, broad summary, let's say, uh, a, ta a table presenting what I mean. For, uh, on the first column, you see first group, second group, third group, uh, about, which, about which I just talked about. The first uh, group of works or the first uh, point of view argues that, broadly argues that the climate change led drought process is important. Um, sorry. On the uh, one extreme side, uh, it can be uh, it is possible to argue that climate change is the single factor. Actually, I just uh, added this just to uh, point to the extreme uh, side of the arguments. Actually, nobody says this, but it can be still argued. A second subcategory argues that climate change is highly important. Uh, Kelly argues this. Mainstream international political statements also argue this. And Telford, for example. I will talk about it in detail. A third subcategory 
argues that climate change is important, but there are more uh, important things actually, like overall uh, the, uh, the situation of the overall uh, Syrian economy or the current need for more actionable research findings. Here, uh, again, broadly speaking, most works can be actually located in this category. Another line of argument says that climate change is important, but only in specific contexts and periods. Here, as an example, maybe the only example, actually, Abel et al. 2019. And a fifth uh, line of argument says that climate change is as important as other factors. This is what I think, actually. Uh, uh, and I, I also am a share the securitization concern of Selby. I will talk about it, which again, uh, which broadly argues that climate change like a drug uh, factor is important. Next comes the second group of uh, arguments, which again broadly dismisses the first group. There are two sub uh, categories here. Number six, which says that climate change led throughout each month is much less important, argued by mainly by Selby actually. Just as I said, uh, some works can be categorized in, let's say, more than one category. An example is Thyssen 2017, which roughly stays between the first and the second group, by the way. Uh, and argument or uh, category number seven uh, says that climate change is irrelevant. Again, uh, this is an hypothetical, uh, this is an, uh, let's say, operational argument, let's say. Nobody exactly says this, but I still noted to show the other extreme point of argumentation. <coughs> And uh, sorry, and finally, there's a third group, which calls for simply uh, calls for more search to the site. It has only one subcategory, uh, argument number eight, let's say, which says that impact of the climate change is not clear, and further research is needed. Here you see the examples uh, and. The case of Abrahams is actually uh, can be located on the intersection of the fir first and the third group. Okay. So we are talking about again uh, three broad uh, ideas, three bro broad uh, answers or suggestions to this to the uh, problem of the nexus of climate change and the Syrian conflict. Here, uh, I will just uh, br uh, briefly show some screens. Uh, these are actually, these are, uh, this will be exact uh, screenshots from the literature. I, uh, I can talk more in detail about them depending on the questions. I will just briefly show them right now. Here, these are some quotations which, introduce, which introduces the debate. For example, uh, Karak 2019 and Le Villon 2018. Here again, they summarizes the debate, just, uh, which in a way which resembles to what I am just trying to do now, actually. Here, for example, Karek notes that some scholars and scientists are calling climate change the invisible player uh, in Syria's ongoing civil war, but is that too simplistic? Is that a too simplistic an explanation? Here, uh, again, there are, for example, he says climate scientists Kelly a link this drought here you see around here link this drought to a long-term warming trend in the, in the eastern mediterranean which 
can only be explained by a rise in greenhouse emissions and human uh, induced climate change. And they also link this phenomena to heightened social vulnerability and the onset of the Syrian civil war. And on the other side, there's a rebuttal to this theory, the second uh, category that I just talked about, social, social scientists. Selby and Hume attribute serious uh, migration to SS economic liberalization policies and also question the assertion that migrants were targeted as uh, causing social stress. So, and they basically fear that co drawing causal links between climate change and conflict become rhetor rhetorical moves to appeal to security interests or achieve sensational headlines. This is a reference to secure. This is a reference to the securitization risk, actually. And uh, while the climate change explanation is compelling, large scale, as Karak puts it, large scale uh, social conflict probably cannot be attributed to climate alone. And social uh, complex social phenomena cannot be disintegrated into single causes. Again. Uh, as a second example, Le Billion again presents the debate. Uh, again, same background. Uh, again, again, again. For example, again, started with Kelly. Ke uh, this, most of the debate is actually Kelly versus Selby. Again, uh, for example, he says, data used by Kelly covers an area called the Fertile Cre uh, Crescent. And despite the claim that climate change in this drought produces produce the conflict, they do not include data on rainfall, etc. There are some specific details. I'm summarizing the, most of the details here. And furthermore, on the other uh, side, Selby argues the opposite view, simply speaking. Uh, understanding the Syrian, Syri uh, Syrian war precisely because it encourages locally specific and detailed investigations and he concludes that the war was produced by long-term structural factors uh, such as water resource degradation, collapse of economy and specific histories, etc. Another brief summary comes from Mohamed et al. Again, same background, same debate. Uh, scholars argued about the roots of the conflict can be categorized into two two broad groups. He says two, but I see it as a I see three three broad groups actually, as I just uh, mentioned in the beginning of my presentation. The first group thinks that a Syrian crisis is a direct impact of climate change, etc. And what, and the second group believes, believes that the social and economic, uh, economic and social govern, uh, governmental policies are the main causes of this current crisis, et cetera, et cetera. There are lots of references to the uh, status uh, of the agriculture. I'm skipping them here. So this, uh, this is the uh, background and overall presentation of the arguments. Now I will talk a bit more about the first group, which argues that, which broadly argues that climate change is a, is an important factor to explain the Syrian conflict in detail. Again, the central work comes from Kelly. Argun hocam, I'm yes. very sorry. The last six minutes, if you oh. uh, allow oh. me to. Okay then. Uh, the reason okay. is because um, we don't we are missing the next speakers, so okay. we will pass on to Sanem Hoja. Uh, so you can just okay. six more minutes, and then we will pass to her. Thank you. O okay, I am skipping them. Okay, I will jump to the conclusion. I can uh, return to this if there are any questions. So conclusion. So uh, this topic, the nexus. Uh, the suggested nexus or the debated nexus between the climate change led drought process and the Syrian uh, conflict definitely requires multidisciplinary work and dialogue between the social sciences and natural sciences. Uh, secondly, while uh, again, most works I reviewed here 
seem to be categorizable under the first group, which means that climate change led drought matters in the simple uh, language. There are noteworthy nuances among them. And thirdly, there is still room for contributions from the internationalization studies. Actually, as I just said, Selby is a professor of internationalizations, but the field is dominated by contributions from, uh, let's say, climate scientists, actually, and not surprisingly. And finally, uh, I think that the climate change factor is as, impo is, as important as domestic and international social, social uh, political factors, plus the risk of securitization is real. So climate change factors should be given more space in public debates and uh, policy planning. And this is it.